of the Dead was a much anticipated sequel for George Romero's classic, Night of the Living Dead. Well, maybe not that anticipated scene as sequels were not too common in 78, but it sure was welcomed by fans who turned out in droves to see it. The film rewrote the zombie genre and delved deep into the humanity of a zombie apocalypse. It's a gore fest with a funny bone and odd emphasis on heart that really takes the film to another level. The year was 1985 and punk rock and horror were at their peak. The combination was a match made in hell and Return of the Living Dead delivered on all cylinders. A comedy horror that led the way, but so few were able to match its brilliance between the talented cast, great script, and innovations to zombies, such as making them fast, smarter, and chatty. It was the first film that made zombies target brain. Dawn of the Dead versus Return of the Living Dead on this episode of Horror Face Off. All right, welcome to Horror Face Off. I am joined with Sean Abley. I got it right this time, right? You did. Soft A. How are you doing, Sean? I'm well. How are you? I'm good, good. Where are you from? Uh, right now, I'm in Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Yes. Nice, nice. Well, thanks for being on the show. Once again, we worked uh, last year on the uh, Horror Slash Show, and I'm happy to have you back. Tony? Volante, where are you from? Brooklyn, baby, Ontario. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't know if. Uh, if Originally from Toronto. Now I'm in uh, Brooklyn. All right. Cool. Cool. Well, welcome this to the show, you guys. Classic, are... classic crosstown rivalry. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are uh, first time on the show, so I appreciate you being here, and we're gonna get uh, down and dirty and discuss zombies and uh so let's get right to it we're going to start off with the story and i'll kind of, i'll go first just to kind of give you guys a little bit of the idea of how it goes and then uh we'll rotate the starting order as we go through the show so for story it's it's kind of tricky because you know they both kind of resemble each other um it's the dead coming alive uh, I guess you could just break it down into, um, you know, do you look, prefer the dead uh, going after punk rock kids or the dead just kind of going after a, a group of isolated uh, people? Um, I, I, again, this one's a really tricky one. There's not much to differentiate in my opinion. We'll see what you guys have to say, but if I'm just going to be quick about this, cause I don't have much to say, I'm just going to give the story to return to the living dead, just for adding that extra military, um, you know, pro uh, the, keeping the, the secret military uh, can canisters there of bodies and uh, or body. Um, so I'm going to kind of give it to that return to the living dead, just, just by a, a hair on that sean what do you say um that's a close one because i you mentioned that and i love the fact that return of the living dead basically tells you that night of the living dead was a docudrama was a true story and here you know here and they and here's here's the secret real thing about it which is a great way to sort of fold in the legacy um with that film and i love return of the living dead i love it but i gotta give it to dawn of the dead for a couple of reasons one i have always had a fantasy of living in a mall i don't know why <laughs> but i love that idea it's sort of like i don't know if you remember this uh, book uh that i read when i was a kid called the boxcar children no. where it's these kids that are orphaned and they're out in the woods and they find an old box car from a train and they make a life in this box car in the middle of the woods and they're totally isolated and they have to like take baths in the lake and like you know eat squirrels for food or whatever so and i that's just sort of like a fantasy of mine of being like <laughs> one of the last people left and sort of recreating society and so it's it's if you think about the film Return of the Living Dead, they're, you know, they're fighting off zombies, but in, in, in Dawn, they're actually having to recreate society up in this like top of this mall, right? They have to, and, and they're sort of playing the long game 
about like what it means to to for the world to be ending mm -hmm. around them and for there to be survivors and and there's character growth and there's you know you watch people being imperfect and uh, making mistakes but also making the right choices and so I don't know there's just something about it that I feel like hands it over to the the next one uh, Day of the Dead really well whereas Return of the Living Dead again I love I love that first trilogy but it I feel like the second one is more of the same so it's not like the first one hands hands off narratively to the next one mm -hmm. so Dawn of the Dead final answer well I guess I should have let him go first uh <laughs> but well <laughs> Welcome to the show, Tony. You get to be the first tiebreaker. All right. So um, it's funny, Sean, that you mentioned that uh, Dawn of the Dead, um, like you had a dream of living in a um, a shopping mall. Because I, I had a similar dream when I was young. There was this transformer, uh, the one that shoots laser. I can't even remember the name, but it shoots um, lasers. Wait. And it was like, which one? Well, Megatron. You, the, the... Not Megatron. It was another one, right? Okay. It had like a little LED dot as, a, as an eye. And I remember that was like my favorite toy. That's the one I've always wanted and never got it. And I always imagined being trapped in a mall. And that would be the first place I would go is to find that toy and start playing with it. And uh, and I was telling Jason as well, like when I, the first time I watched Dawn of the Dead, it was like this really memorable experience for me for some reason. And maybe it had something to do with that dream. I never connected the two. Um, it, it's a, yeah, it, I feel like that movie, it, it's a little bit more serious there's uh, more of an underlying message, you know, around consumerism, and and you're right about the character growth too, right? Um, whereas Return is more like uh, kind of punch you in the face, <laughs> right? <laughs> not not much, uh, no real message there other than just like entertainment. Uh, I'll have to take Return of the Living Dead on this one though, because I thought it was a lot more fun, and mm -hmm. it's a movie that I can watch over and over again. All right. All right, you you were setting it up for Dawn of the Dead, and then at the last second, I, like, I put a little oh, twist in there. Right? You got me. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. I'm, really, I'm I'm already realizing how hard this is going to be for with no ties. <laughs> were you coming in prepared to tie tie a bunch off? No, I was actually coming in prepared. I I have a favorite. If if I could, I won't do it. But if I could carry my camera into my bathroom, you'd see a poster of one of these two films oh, okay. that I have I've carried with me for many many years, and I came in loaded for that movie. But now I'm already like reconsidering. Okay. Well, listen. <laughs> you know what's funny is like you could still like. I mean, for example, I mean, if I were to put my favorite movie, which is Clue, um, against a film like Jaws. And which I also love, but I'm just right. saying, technically, I don't think Clue's going to stand much of a chance with categories. So your favorite movie might not necessarily be categorically uh, above and beyond the other film, but yeah. you know, it just does something better, more for you, right? So that that could happen. So we'll see. We'll see. There are definitely flaws in Dawn of the Dead, some of which I love. Oh, the, I think a lot of the films that we uh, we feature in the horror <laughs> yeah. genre have flaws. So, yeah. all right, no, so no, we're going to move. We're yeah. gonna move on to. Sorry, Ty. No, no. I was gonna say, and I was also surprised that you said it, it grossed sixty-six million dollars. I was Donald surprised Dad? too. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, I was surprised with that one too. Um, but uh, but Wikipedia doesn't lie, so we're just gonna go with that. Um, all right, so we're gonna move on to setting, and we're gonna start off with you, Sean. Setting. Well, I think I've already played my hand <laughs> on that one. Um, I think that the the mall is you know it has everything and it really sets up um uh george romero's you know consumerism um, situation although i don't i think it's kind of delivered with a sledgehammer i i i, I you know so it is it's less a allegory than it is just a story i guess um but i have mad love for that cemetery i really do and i really love cemeteries um i find them fascinating um every time we go like my husband and i have traveled to europe a couple times and i'm like let's go to the cemetery we like went to the cemetery where like um oscar wilde is buried and, um but i i'm gonna stick with with dawn of the dead on this one i think the mall gives them something to do um that make it they have to fortify that mall for reasons other than just to keep the zombies out they have to keep the people out and mm -hmm. so I think that is because there's something valuable inside there other than themselves. So I, I'm going to get, I'm going to stick with Dawn of the Dead on this one. All right. Nice. Tony. 
Yeah, again, I, I love the idea of a mall, but um, you're right, the cemetery and Return of the Living Dead, um, you know, everything around it, and um, just like the industrial buildings, the warehouses, I love the, you know, that they have bodies hanging up on hooks and, <laughs> and uh, half dogs <laughs> and butterflies that all come to life. Um, you know, I think that this setting, it just kind of puts you into this really small town America, and then you just kind of you're, you feel like you're trapped there, you know, surrounded by the zombies. So I'm going to give it to uh, return on this one. All right. I'm going to jump on the mall love train. Um, but uh, just because, I mean, I, there's something, there is something awesome about a mall um, for a film and it more, I mean, kind of going back to like, you know, the filmmaker in me, you know, just the idea of having like, you know, a mall to yourself to shoot a film just seems like so much fun and I, I would I would sign up for that any day of the week um and I, lo I love that setting I mean I, I go to malls so I kind of you know I can relate um but I'm gonna give it to Return of the Living Dead because to me Return of the Living Dead is al it's almost like a Halloween set like, you know, it from like you were saying, Tony, with like, you know, well, the, the mortuary and bombing and all that. But then that cemetery is so like rich with, you know, decor. And, uh, um, you know, I think I remember hearing something that they rented every tombstone uh, that the studio had and just and it looks like it, too. And uh, and I, I just, you know, I, I love I love the. Um, you know the 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 lighting of of the of the sets and stuff like that so i just there's something about where they're trapped that is appealing despite them being eaten alive i still want to be there so um yeah so i'm going to give it to return as well nice oh you mentioned those butterflies that come alive which is i think one of the genius genius moments in that movie that is perfectly mm -hmm. calibrated because it's just sort of happens and it's not a featured moment it's just something if you see it you see it i love that yeah it's like it's done in passing but it kind of it resonates right because like yeah that's right that would happen wouldn't it yeah that's that's a good point um a zombie movie that makes you think so uh okay so we're gonna move to filmmaking tony we'll start off with you so uh directing filmmaking who do you give the edge to well, this isn't my strong point, but uh, I'd have to say, um, you know, again, seeing both those films, uh, it's like not even a question. It'd have to go to Dawn of the Dead. I think George Romero is just like fantastic and, you know, everything he does. So um, I think it, it's, it, it, whereas Return, you feel like you're you're trapped in that uh, in that small town and you're, you're being surrounded by the zombies. In it, you get a similar feeling with, um, uh, Dawn of the Dead, and I think the fact that it's just some place that's just so that you'd find comfortable and familiar, yet still in danger. I think he does a really good job of, of, you know, creating that kind of theme. Cool. So I'm gonna give it to uh, Dawn of the Dead. All right. So I'm gonna go. I'll go next because I'm gonna put the tiebreaker on you, Sean, because I'm gonna go Return of the Living Dead, and um and and just you know like I mean part of it is just it's. Romero does a great job at you know being Romero um and I'm not sure that that it means brilliant filmmaker um like I don't want to take anything away from him and what he brought to the table um you know but I think that Return of the Living Dead was um was shot pretty tight there's not very much uh there's not not very many weaknesses in that uh, in that production um you know like there's uh i mean there could be some maybe story arcs that weren't defined or or realized but for the most part i think that dawn of the dead has has some cringy moments when you watch them that are part of the charm and i get that but from my perspective i you know i'd, I'd rather the clean film versus you know the the uh independent we gave it our best shot filmmaking <laughs> style so sean what are you gonna say well I, I actually agree with you a lot about dawn in that there's something about the film that you know it's it's sort of it was shot on like cheap film stock on you know on film and that sort of matte finish of the movie almost makes it feel like a documentary mm -hmm. 
and the sort of bland, like the mall is a great location, but it's really bland. And, you know, nobody had heard of any of those actors that were in it. And, you know, some are better than others. Um, and, you know, there's stuff like the purple zombies. Like I'm looking at the whole thing. Like, you know, Tom Savini has been famously like aghast at the color correction of that movie. And while the zombies are purple instead of, you know, pale. Um, there's also... Uh, the thing about George Romero, and I'm not an across the board fan of all of his work, you know, if I look at it in total, mm -hmm. I don't actually think that he was an amazing filmmaker. I think that he was, I think there's something about the fact that he wasn't an amazing filmmaker that makes Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead really, really effective because mm -hmm. there's not trickery. There's not big set pieces in a way. There's not like amazing um, cinematography. It's just sort of like police lineup shots. Yeah. And you no, know, that's not fair. That's actually not completely true, but, but it's enough true that, that that's why I enjoy those films, but I love return of the living dead. I think it is so well calibrated. I think like those moments we talked about, about the butterfly and the split dog and, and the performances and how the comedy is played almost completely straight every time. And that comes from a director and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just keep remembering the moment where the, the corpse is running around and they take the pickaxe. James Karen takes the pickaxe. Or no, is it Clue Gulliger who takes the pickaxe and hits it in the head? And James Karen's like, get in the brain, get in the brain. And Gulliger is like, I got it in the fucking brain. Yeah. I just, I don't know. If you add it all up together, I got to give it to Return of the Living Dead. All right. Yeah. All right. So it's, uh... it's comedy category. Sorry. Is no. comedy a category? <laughs> Unfortunately, there's not very many that uh, will be on the show that have the comedy. Because Donna, that, in my opinion, has a lot of comedy in there, too. So, um, yeah. but, all right. So, we're moving on to acting. Uh, the characters will follow. So, this is just strictly acting. Um, so, try not to go into a character analysis here. But uh, we'll start off with you, Tony. Acting. So, yeah, I mean, if I had to broad brush stroke it i would say right away dawn of the dead um i feel like there was a little bit you know it's taking itself a little bit more seriously right than um than uh, return of the living dead which is i found there were parts in there that they were just i guess trying to make fun of themselves right they knew it was you know they weren't trying to be too serious um you know there's some moments where you can see like uh, in, in return they're just weren't really trying <laughs> to act i guess um I, I, but I found like, you know, the uh, uh, Dawn of the Dead had, had much better acting and just because it was just, um, I think it, like it was a little bit more raw, more gritty and um, it wasn't over directed, I find. Mm -hmm. And they were just, you know, they're saying their lines with kind of raw emotion. So mm -hmm. I'm going to give this one to Dawn. All right. John? This is really a tough one because I, you know, again, the sort of actors that we hadn't really heard, you know, Galen Ross had like never done anything before, famously tells the story about how she got this movie and then had to learn how to act and got this acting teacher that was, you know, trying to like, so when the zombies come, well, you know, um, but that's kind of the charm of it, right? Again, it's that whole like cinema verite, like these are real people and, um, as opposed to the comedy, where you're watching performances, you're in Return of the Living Dead, you're absolutely watching performances. And, you know, the one that almost brings me to return is Linnea Quigley, who has never been better and never been braver in a movie than Return, where she's full on naked for like the entire, you know, like the shirt at one point. And that takes guts, mm -hmm. quite frankly. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to give it to Don as well. I think that the, that the sort of understated style uh, really adds something to the movie. All right. Well, I am unswayed by either of your arguments. I am going with Return of the Living Dead. Um, I Again, I think that Dawn of the Dead had a little bit of, um, you know, some, some weak moments in there. Um, not many. Not many, but just some emotional elements you know just some moments where you're expecting a little bit more emotion you didn't get it and then when you got it maybe it was a little melodramatic but the reason why it's not even so much a knock on dawn it's just 
it's just a salute to Return of the Living Dead with uh, James Karen, Clue, and um, Don Kalfa there. Those three, because um, you know, you have a tendency of looking at the kids in Return of the Living Dead, but to me, those three uh, actors were unbelievable. Like, I mean, they they look like seasoned veterans, and they were just giving it uh, every scene. And and I just I get a kick out of them. The, the chemistry between the three of them um well mostly clue with one and then clue with the other but like i mean i just i i i love those guys those guys make the film for me so um i have no no hang-ups about uh, their performances uh even if it is a little over the top at sometimes um that movie kind of the way it's you know the way the story goes it kind of lends itself to to that so um yeah so i'm gonna go with return all yeah. right all right I will say that uh, I had a gigantic crush on Tom Matthews forever and ever. And like <laughs> fo- it followed him as much as I could before the internet existed. And then even more so once the internet rolled around. He, um, he's a cool, cool guy. Like he's just like, I, I interviewed him for one of the right? podcasts. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, you interviewed him, right? In yeah. And he, he's just, he's just cool. <laughs> like he's just like some guys that just have it. He's got it um anyways so we are going to now go to characters and i'll start off with this one um this one's tough because i i i'm gonna go back to uh sean your original uh point about uh character arcs and you know and and just really kind of loving the characters or wanting them to figure this out um in return of the living dead as much as I love the characters, I, I'm kind of enjoying them getting killed, you know? So I think that, um, you know, if, if I were to look at, again, the, the older guys in the film uh, of Return of the Living Dead, I think those characters are really, really strong and the chemistry is really, is, so it's really, really hard for me to go against Return of the Living Dead because of those three. And of course, Tom Matthews, but I'm just, you know, um, but I am going to give it to Dawn of the Dead um, for much of the reasons you mentioned, Sean, there's, there's, there's a, there's compassion. There's like, there's, there's a a sense of like, what are they going to do? And, you know, let's, let's hope they do survive. Like, you know, and, uh, and yeah, so I'm going to, Ended at that, and I'm going to throw it to you, Sean. Oh, such a tough one, because I, except for uh, Don Calfa, right? No, no, James Karen, James Karen, when he goes into the oven, spoiler, when he goes into the oven, <laughs> and Friend of the Living Dead, I'm kind of waiting for the, like, set him up, knock him down in that movie. So I, I enjoy them, but I'm not invested in them. Whereas I'm really invested in the people in Dawn of the Dead. Mm-hmm. And not just the the quartet, but the the zombies for some reason in Dawn land on me more. And so even there's the ridiculous ones like the nurse zombie, God mm-hmm. bless her. She's like making the festival circuit and you know, get get signing autographs <laughs> for her legendary uh mock performance in the film. Um, but you know, there's like the moment like the nun gets caught in the door and and the 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 moony i you know the 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 cult person and like mm-hmm. just, for some reason i had more of a sense that the 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 dead people in dawn of the dead were actual people that i could have known versus mm-hmm. return of the living dead so sort of looking at that whole like in the aggregate i i would say i would say uh dawn and especially although this is kind of not fair if the original ending had been kept um it would have been even a a more a harder yes on on that all right and do you want to elaborate on the original ending sure um the original ending and you know there's it's hotly debated whether or not it was actually shot some people say that they they shot it other people say it never got to that point but in the end um Fran is in the helicopter and she is the last one to survive. Every, everyone else has died. She is pregnant. And for whatever reason, she just sees the hopelessness in the situation as the zombies are coming up into the roof 
And so she stands up and sticks her head into the blades of the helicopter, which is running and kills herself. And then as we pull back, we see that the helicopter runs out of gas momentarily. So had she even, had she gotten into the helicopter, she probably would have died anyway. Um, there's one still out there, one production still of them, of, of, is it Savini maybe, holding the body that they were they used supposedly for that shot. But I think that's all the proof that exists right now. I could be wrong about that. Wow, I didn't know that. So I'm, yeah, uh, thanks for sharing. Tony, yeah, what do you got now? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess like um, I, if if I was to pick one character that uh, was my favorite th uh, between both movies, it would have to be uh, James Karen. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just I found him hilarious all the way through, right, right from the beginning yeah. to the end. Um, just like as you know, superior when you're starting a new job, he's like kind of showing you around. He's not really teaching anything, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> He was over dramatic too, you know, in some of those yeah. scenes. Um, and you know, uh, and you were uh, Sean, you were mentioning like you know, there's different zombies that were you know dressed differently, but in, in Dawn of the Dead, it was more of the classic kind of you know, just kind of walking dead type thing. Whereas in uh, Return of the Living Dead, I don't know some people don't like it, you know, some of the zombies actually had some personality. <laughs> they still they were still zombies, right? But you know, they were able right. to talk and and uh, and run and do things, right? Um but you know, overall, I think just because of James, I'd have to give it to uh, uh, Return. The fact that the zombies in Return can talk is pretty cool. I will say that. Yeah, yeah. Send more cops. Send more cops. It was, it was yeah. the first. It was the first film that had brains as you know yeah. uh, the language of uh, of the zombie. Yeah. Which All is right. interesting. People, people think that's Dawn of the Dead. People think that's George Romero's films because anytime you mention any zombie film now, people say brains, brains, but that that wasn't him. Yeah, I know. It's funny, eh? Um, yeah, because it's just it's so ingrained in the zombie uh, culture. All right, so next category is kills. And we're going to start off with Tony. Yeah, so kills. Um, Don obviously has much more gore. I think they they've done a, a much better job there. Um, uh, there were some you know, very few. They're kind of okay in in Return of the Living Dead. Uh, didn't have the same element of gore or or splatter, you know, <laughs> as as Don. Um, so uh, this one I'd have to give to Don hands down. Um, they obviously put a lot more effort into into the puppetry and you know tom savini obviously is a uh, knows his uh blood spatter better than anyone else so i'd have to give it to don all right i'm gonna i'm gonna keep it kind of short i think i agree with you um uh it just overall it was just endless right like you know and um the, the only thing that bugged me was this, you know all the the shooting and then just the blood splurting out from the back, but nothing happening in the front that it just, you know, it, it, it was a cumulative effect. I could, t I could handle it in the beginning. By the end of it, I'm like, come on, but we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll give it to Don. <laughs> John. Uh, Don of the dead. Uh, yeah. Hands down. I, you know, the, it's all of the creative kills, which literally, if you follow the movie, like I do, you know, that there was like sometimes making it up at the moment and they were doing it for fun. And um, yeah. I, I, I hands down I, 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 you know i actually can't think of any kills in return that you really see uh the what's his face the uh the main guy um the guy that drives the car with um the guy that dies first by the tar uh, tar zombie suicide yeah where they kind of bite his head you kind of you right you see that but uh, but you're right. It's not overly uh, overly graphic on the kills, which is kind of weird because you know yeah. they put a, they put money into the effects, right? It was there, but uh, um, although kills. I will say probably my favorite kill is in Return of the Living Dead, although it's not exactly a kill. But when the zombie tackles the paramedic, that's mm -hmm. one of my all time favorites right there. That was that was sweet. Yeah. All right. So I think that's the first sweep of a category right there. Mm. All right, we're going to go on to Scare Factor. So which one of these films scared you more, Sean? Uh, Dawn of the Dead. I had Dawn of the Dead Nightmares 
recurring nightmares for a decade or more after that movie. And I'm not saying it's because the movie scared me that badly, but it it like melded on to something in my life and sort of became like the the interpretation of that um when I when I would have these nightmares. And also the first time I saw it, it was the scariest. Mm-hmm. By the time I got to return, you know, you know, you sort of you know you're in for it, but but Don, I, I had no idea going in what it was going to be like at all. And so, and and yeah, I, I, that's all I'll say. Don, Don of the Dead, hands down for me on that one. Tony? Yeah, um, same. Um, I remember, like I said, I remember watching it for the first time. It was at a friend's house. It was after school. We were chilling at his house. And he asked us, you know, you want to watch a movie? Sure. So that's the movie that we watched. And it was like afternoon after after the movie was done and I was taking the bus home and I remember being legitimately scared walking out into the open. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, I don't remember ever feeling that way. Now that was one of the first zombie movies I've ever seen. So maybe that had something to do with it, but I think, yeah, for a, a genuine fear factor, it's done of the dead. Uh, I'm going to go with Don as well. Um, it's eerie. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of crude and, and, you know, and it's very seventies and everything in the seventies is scary. Um, and, and I love the (laughs) seventies. That's why. Um, so I, yeah, I'm just gonna, again, I'll just kind of keep it uh, short, but I'll definitely give the edge. I think there's times where return might could, you know, maybe could elevate the scariness, but then it's, it's almost immediately followed by something that's funny or cool and you know and and it kind of just diminishes the the intensity of a scene or the the scare intensity of a scene so i'm going to give it to don yeah and it's funny you mentioned suicide i feel like i want to take back my favorite character and give it to suicide now (laughs) yeah some of the best lines (laughs) yeah yeah short short uh short screen time but he was he was impactful for sure yeah but there's no going back. This is a rule that we had to establish on a previous show. And it was actually me that wanted to go back. But so there, once, <laughs> it, once it's on, on tape, it's over. All right. So we're going to go to the antagonist. And I'll start off. I feel like I, I haven't gone first so um, in a while. So I'm going to say that mine would probably go to Return of the Living Dead. I think that, I mean, listen, we're dealing with zombies. So it's, uh, you know, zombie versus zombie. But I just... To me, you know, when you watch Dawn of the Dead nowadays, you you can appreciate it because we saw it at a certain time. I don't know how much those zombies and, and those antagonists in the film overall would would really appeal to a younger generation besides being, you know, poorly made up and, you know, like looking like a, a Halloween costume for a kid, um, despite the people that were involved in that film. I think the zombies in Return of the Living Dead look better. Um, I like the uh, the speed um, component to it, uh, and I liked how they they were just they, you could, they were thinking you know a little bit you know but not too much, and uh, and yeah and just throw in a couple of words here for some humor and um, yeah to me this one was in my opinion a no brainer. Tony. Yeah, I'm going to have to be on the same page there. Um, and if I had to pick like one zombie in particular, <laughs> I'm torn between either the um, the one in the barrel or uh, the old grand grandma that they pull out of the <laughs> in, in, into the room. And she says, you know, she's just talking about how she can feel herself rot. Yeah. I thought, that, I thought that was really, that was something really new, you know? Yeah. And I thought that was a great idea. So this one has to go to uh, return. Sean? Well, it's Uh-oh. interesting. <laughs> I, well, I saw the list of you know questions and I was thinking, who is the antagonist in these movies? Because in Dawn of the Dead, you know, your, your first instinct would be it's like the gang, but it, I don't think the gang is the antagonist in the movie. That's not what they're working against the whole time. They're working against the zombies. So it's just sort of like this. But in return, the antagonist is the government. Because the government started the zombies, the government made the zombies, they left the things around, and in the end, they're working against them because they, you know, spoiler, well, I won't tell the ending, but it's, you know, the ending is certainly at the hand of the government, 
It's a 40 year old uh, film you can spoil away. <laughs> well, you know, they, they destroy the town. They, you know, the government destroys the town. Um, and, you know, they didn't help them. They set the, set the wheels in motion. So I would give it to re return. For, for sure. A different reason than Tony and I, I like it. Right. Well, you know, it's, it's what's happening right now. I don't want to get too political, but it just feels like that's in the air right now. Cool. Yeah. Would it play out any differently today? I think that's exactly the way it would play out. Right. <laughs> right. Well, let me stop you right there because we're on to the last category, which is the ending. And we're going to start it off with you, Sean. So, oh, screw you and your no ties. Um, <laughs> I really, gosh, I really don't know. I mean, the first heated moment in this show. I, I think, I think in a rare moment of nuance in Dawn of the Dead, not doing the original ending and you know they fran and um why can't i remember his name uh, oh ken ken, ken Forey. Forey. peter 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 uh, um you know they get in the plane or the plane the helicopter takes off and how much gas do we have very little mm -hmm. and you know and you know from night of the living dead that george mara was not about having a happy ending and certainly not about giving you any hope and so there's that strange thing where instead of seeing characters killed, you're just assuming that it that's probably going to happen pretty soon. So that's a that's a tough one. But I just think that normally I really hate like a Deus Ex Machina sort of ending to something that feels like it's unearned, like the missile hitting the town <laughs> in Return of the Living Dead. But but in that movie, they've actually telegraphed it the whole time. Mm -hmm just you know they've they've built to that moment so it is earned so i guess i'll go with dawn i'll guess I, but that is a that's like a hairline difference between the two all right tony yeah and i think it's both very very similar endings in a way right it's it's mysterious and maybe perhaps there's some way that uh, however dire the outcome looks that there's a chance that they could survive right um, maybe the nuclear bomb that dropped was a dud. Who knows? Right? <laughs> it can happen, I guess. Right? But it feels like you know that, that that's what they're trying to achieve, right? It was like you know maybe there's this slight bit of hope, and maybe they're just teasing you with that because there's never going to be one, right? Uh, if, if it is an allegory for death. So, I mean, I, I think I, I would have to give it to um, to return because I love that that military commander at the end. With that giant get up in his uh, in his room <laughs> in his office, yeah. right? the computer's got to be big and take up the whole wall, right? That's what makes it look legitimate, right? So I have to give it to uh, return in this case. Okay, so um, yeah, like I mean, again, you know, show me a zombie film with a happy ending. Is there one? I don't know. Not not that I need one, but I'm just Sha saying. Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead. Okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, happy -ish. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you, you almost know when you watch a zombie movie, you, you you almost know the ending style. And and again, yeah, these kind of mirror each other in a way. Um, Dawn of the Dead, I, I liked it. Like, you know, I like that line, like, you know, about the gas, like, you know, we don't have much left. You know, they're holding on the helicopter. You're almost expecting the helicopter to kind of dip down and just, just crash, which would have been funny. Uh, maybe that's a return of living dead ending. Um, and, I, and I really like that. However, um, I do like uh, Return of the Living Dead a little bit more in the sense that, you know, it was, it, it, you know, you saw, I mean, like you said, Sean, they were kind of playing up to it. But I mean, how many small zombie films end with a nuclear bomb just eradicating the whole situation? And it almost seemed fitting for that type of film. Um, and, and it was and it was cleverly shot like you know the intensity is building the music in it is like really kind of elevating and it's and it's it's really done well and i think that that's why i, I kind of like that ending that ending could have been really hokey and really really silly if not shot properly and i think it was so for that i'll uh, i'll give it to return of living dead mm -hmm. 
All right. So after the most closely contested show, do you guys have any prediction? Do you guys kind of know or know where it went? Uh, well, I just wonder why you have Ronald McDonald in, the, in your background there. Ronald, it's not. It's Leatherface. Oh, okay. <laughs> is it Leatherface or is it Jinx Monsoon from RuPaul's? No, it's, <laughs> or Carrot Top or something. It's a pretty <laughs> damn good Leatherface mask. I'm proud of that one. I guess maybe the lighting is messing it up. But you know what? Ronald McDonald would probably scare more people these days. So, <laughs> right. Anyway. So okay, so you 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 sideswipe that the results <laughs> here with Ronald McDonald. I'll keep quiet. Okay. No, no, it's all good. So at the end of this battle, it was Dawn of the Dead with a thirteen, Return of the Living Dead with eleven. So oh. in the slightest of margins, because anything else anything closer would have been a tie and i don't know what i'm going to do with a tie in this show so i'm happy <laughs> to say that we have a clear-cut winner and it's dawn of the dead yes. and i could tell sean is happy he came to represent Again, and he did in my in my bathroom right behind me is the original one sheet that i got when during the original release of dawn of the dead and when i was that was 1978 so i was about 13 14 um no less than that and that frame poster has followed me through every apartment every college dorm room every like literally every every washroom you've ever been okay, exactly i take it with me to work <laughs> you hang it up before you start and then, yeah exactly. well, that's, that's pretty cool because you know that was the question we were we were definitely wondering because you teased in the beginning of the show and like this show plays out like a story in the end tony <laughs> we found out what was hanging in his washer and it was yeah. thankfully yeah because i was on my mind right since the beginning of this episode <laughs> i do know how to craft a narrative i paid a lot <laughs> you that. did paid a lot for that playwriting mfa you sure did and uh anyways guys this was fun because uh it was really really close um like I said, I've done a few of these shows, but this has definitely been the closest one. I didn't know who was going to win when I was tabulating it, but in the end, it was close. Congratulations, Donna the Dead. Thank you, Sean and Tony, for joining me on Horror Face Off. I look forward to you both doing future shows. Is it in the cards? Absolutely. Yeah. I, yeah. Awesome. I, are we supposed to tell which one? I told I told you the ones that I wanted to. to yeah. To yeah. No, of. no, don't. Don't spoil it. Don't well, spoil it. Jeez, you're all, you're all about like you know oh, the unva <laughs> unveiling at the end, but I'm dangling the clue. Exactly, exactly. But anyways, I regardless, you guys, I'm looking forward to uh, doing this again with both of you, uh, together or not. Have a great night, and we'll see you on the next horror face-off. Stay scary, everyone.